So I'm not going to sugarcoat anything with you dorks. This is literally my second attempt of doing this. I was literally recording for like 20 minutes or so to find out that my microphone setting on OBS was default. So literally there was no audio coming in. And I was rambling on for 20 minutes and now here I am redoing this again. Here we are. It is Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. It is August the 16th, 2019. This is a early installment of Around the Point. It's kind of weird. I know it is, but the reason being is simple. I am going to Virginia. I'm going to Virginia in a couple of hours from now. It is my niece's quinceanera tomorrow. Her take on a sweet 16 if you come from, from, Latin, from Latin American culture. Okay? So, I'll be with family this coming weekend. Hence why this week there will not be a Team Hill podcast. However, there will be, as you can see, a early installment of Around the Point. And there's so much shit to get into, okay? Keep this in mind. This week has totally kicked my ass. I've been out of it, okay? SummerSlam weekend literally just fucked me up, okay? Friday went to House of Glory. Saturday, you had TakeOver Toronto. Sunday was SummerSlam. And then Monday, I had to pick up my father from the airport. And just so much hectic bullshit that happened on Monday. His flight got delayed, and he didn't get into Jersey until, like, freaking 8.30 p.m., which should have been at 1 p.m. And just so much hectic shit, okay? But literally Saturday, right, I did two podcasts in one day. And then Sunday... You can make the argument I did two podcasts, but one of them was just, okay, just a, a reaction show, basically. But if you want to be technical with it, four podcasts in just two days, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, holy crap, I was fucking exhausted. I really, really was. So, past Saturday, I did an early installment of Around the Point where I talked about my thoughts on NXT going to FS1 live on Wednesdays, head-to-head -head with AEW. And all that fun stuff. The Wednesday Night Wars, right? I also, hours after, I did a full review of NXT TakeOver Toronto. My thoughts on that show. My thoughts on the main event of Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano for the NXT Championship. Two out of three falls match. It's crazy to think that that's mat the match has literally almost been a week that happened, basically, right? And what happened, all that fun stuff. It's amazing. Fucking amazing. And I thought that Gargano was going to make, uh, make a debut on 205 Live, but that didn't happen either. And then Sunday, myself and Big Mike and Walter did a Wrestle Companion. We did our reaction to SummerSlam as it was happening live. People were complaining about the network lagging and buffering and shit like that. And I hope come, I want to say Clash of Champions, that WWE Network gets their shit together. And after that, hours later, after the pay-per-view was done, I went live and did my SummerSlam review. So if you've not checked those out yet, either the SummerSlam review or if not, the TakeOver Toronto review, they're up in the video archives of the channel. Go give them a watch as well as around the point and and stuff. But again, there's so much to get into, guys. My thoughts on Sasha Banks returning. My thoughts on the King of the Ring coming up. That's right, a tournament's happening. My thoughts on Buddy Murphy's performance with Roman Reigns on SmackDown. My thoughts on Austin Theory and Santana Garrett coming to NXT, signing the WWE in general, and I, I'm pitching an idea, basically, for Austin Theory to debut on my NXT, which I, which I know they'll never do, but fuck it anyway. We'll give it a shot. Why the fuck not? Also, my thoughts on Rocco's Modern Life on Netflix. Yes, I'm a 90s kid. All this and more, guys. This is, ladies and gentlemen, as always, this is Around the Point. Do not go anywhere, you fucking dorks. As you guys can see, guys, I have evolved. I have evolved. There you go. You can call me Heel, call me HS, or you can just call me now Supreme Heel. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just fucking kidding. Rupin Supreme. Why the fuck not? Had this around in the house for a while. There you go. Why the fuck not, right? Hey, Supreme. Sign me. Saying, <laughs> thank you all for tuning in again. It is Friday. Thank you all for listening. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up and share it through social media. 
You can follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Use the hashtag on the bottom right corner, hashtag ATPoint. So we're, we know that we're talking about around the point on Twitter, okay? Before I go any further, I want to give a big thank you to the homie himself. The one, the only, Salarex for all the awesome overlay that you see here. He was also responsible for the overlay that you saw for both the TakeOver Toronto review and the SummerSlam review. He's also responsible not just for the logo for Around the Point, but also for the logo for the Team Heal podcast. And if you are a YouTuber and if you are a podcaster and you want the best graphics designs done for you, then look no further to Salrex. Hit him up on Twitter now at SRXGFX. Tell him that I sent you. Not only is he responsible for the graphic designs on this channel, but also for the graphic designs for JD from NY206. You all may know him. He's the host of Off the Script. Also responsible for the Solid Monsters graphic designs, the host of the Solid Monster Sounds Off. By the way, both JD and Solid Monster, right, did an amazing job at House of Glory this past weekend at High Intensity 8. I was there. It was fun. Speaking of House of Glory, he also does the graphic design for House of Glory, also for Big Mike from Big Mike Wrestling Recap Show, and many other people as well. So again, tell him that I sent you. That is at SRXGFX. Tell him that I sent you. Tell him that you want the smoke. Tell him that you want that work, and he will make magic happen for you. So, there's so much to get into. Let's get this out of the way. So, this week, I did watch the Rocco's Modern Life special. I did watch it. And I got to say over, listen, I am a 90s kid. I grew up on the 90s. To me, Rocco's Modern Life will forever be probably the best cartoon that's ever been done in Nickelodeon. Growing up as a kid. For me, at least, right? Granted, you, you can make the argument. There was Doug. There was the Rugrats. There was Ariel Monsters. Ren and Stimpy. Cat Dog what have you, that could have been the best. For me, it was Rocco's Modern Life. And then as time went on, you got into Hey Arnold, you got into SpongeBob, Cat Dog, and stuff like that, right? But for me, it was Rocco's Modern Life. He also invaders them, but I didn't mention them either. And the Angry Beavers, okay? But I loved Rocco's Modern Life as a kid. I really, really did. As a kid, that was my show. And I decided to watch the Netflix special. It's like a 45-minute long thing where basically Rocco, Heifer, and Philbert uh, they're in space for 20 years. They land back on Earth. And it turns out when they come back to Earth, everything around them has changed. They're in the 21st century, right? Their smartphone and stuff like that, right? And they realized also that Ed, Ed Bighead, who is Mr. Bighead, right, um, fucked up. He fucked up heavily. That old town is now in just deep shit now, right? And Rocco, at the same time, is a big fan of the Fatheads. So he can't watch the last episode. And being that now they're, they're on a different Earth, they're on Earth, but things have changed, they don't make the fatheads no more. So in order to save O-Town from Ed Bighead's big fucking mistake, they got to find Ralph Bighead, the son of Ed and Viv Bighead, Mr. and Mrs. Bighead, who was also the creator of the fatheads, and maybe that can bring O-Town back to normal, right? So Hefford, Filbert... And Rocco travel all over the world, try to find Ralph. To find out that Ralph is now selling ice cream of the fatheads. Also to find out that Ralph is no longer Ralph Bigger, but now he's going by Rachel Bighead. Rachel. So he got a sex change. And here's the thing about it, okay? Listen, I am all for everyone to live how they want to live. I am all for equal rights. My brother's openly gay. And all that fun stuff, right? So I'm all with the LGBT and all that fun stuff, okay? But keep this in mind, okay? The one thing that I'm just going to say that really kind of ticked me off is that they had to go there. You really had to shove the agenda on this, on my childhood. Really? Why? I have no idea. I'll never understand. But I, honestly, yeah, I do get it. I, I kind of get it, to be honest. I take that back. I do get it. They're trying to show that, hey... We are, they're, they're now in a, they're, they're now in a time where everything can happen. You got something for what it was, the past, the past. And again, it is what it is. So I get that part, but I just, again, to me, it was not necessary at all. That's just my honest opinion. Take it for what it's worth. But again, it's worth the watch. If you want to watch it again, if you are, if you're someone that grew up in the nineties and want to relive that nostalgia, 
Go give it a watch. I hope that they do more. It would be nice, honestly, if they bring back Rock with Modern Life in Nickel on Nickelodeon. I'm not sure if they would or not, honestly. But I remember back in the day, my parents, when they were together, right, uh, they had Dish Network. And on Dish Network, they had all the Nickelodeon channels, right? Nickelodeon East Coast, West Coast, and also like the old school Nickelodeon, right? So you watch all like the classic stuff from Nickel from back in the day and all that stuff. And I used to watch Rock with Modern Life on that. So there's that. I also watched Glow season three. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but I'm just going to say this. Season three really shit the bed. It was really not the best season at all. I don't think they're going to bring it back. I think they're done with it. But bruh, I understand there's people that, that told me that, yo, after two episodes, I couldn't watch it no more. And that's fine and dandy. Oh, shit, they're coming to get me. Just kidding. Me being who I am, I literally watched everything. I watched all 10 episodes of season three because I am. That's the kind of guy that I am. I'm, 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 you know, I'll watch it. I'll finish it. What have you, right? But man, was it cringe. It was really, really fucking cringe. But yeah, there's that. Okay, let's get into the wrestling stuff, okay? There's so much to get into. So Sasha Banks made her return to Monday Night Raw this past Monday after SummerSlam, right? People were kind of upset. Oh, why not put it on Thumberslam and shit like that? That's what all the dwarfs were saying. And to that, I say, well, listen, you know, if you brought her on Summerslam, it would not have been the big thing on the show. Granted, her video, the video on the on on the WWE YouTube channel of Sasha returning on Raw and turning heel like she did has like three million views. Good on them. And man, was she ever like so so like you know again needed to come back. And again, there was speculation. Will she come back or not? This and that after WrestleMania 35. She comes back. And it looks like she's going to, again, hug Natalia because Natty lost the day before she tapped out to Becky Lynch. And again, they're in the ring. They're embracing. And then Sasha lets her have it. Takes off her wig to show that she has blue hair. A new look. I'm with it. But more importantly, she's a heel. She's a heel. At a time where, hey, you know what? The women's division right now, they needed that that they needed that lift. They did. And, but more importantly, when you think about it too, it's someone for Becky Lynch to feud with now. Because after that, Becky comes out, trying to make the save. But Sasha just has her way with Becky Lynch. And just attached with the steel chair and all that stuff. And I, again, I, I you know what? If something for the fall, post-SummerSlam, you need something, right? And why not? You know what? Why the fuck not? I mean, you're not going to do, right, a freaking Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch match. You're not doing that. Or a Nikki Cross versus Becky. They're not happy. They're not doing that either. Or a Charlotte versus Becky feud. Fuck no. What makes sense, you bring back Sasha Banks. You bring her back as a heel. NXT Sasha Banks. The boss. And it writes itself, the man versus the boss. The boss versus the man. I'm all in on this. I hope WWE, I hope WWE doesn't fuck this shit up. Again, you can tell that they're they're trying to shake things up a bit coming out of SummerSlam. You just hope they don't fuck this shit up. That's all I'm hoping for. Honestly, that's all I'm really hoping for. But likely they'll probably have a match at Clash of Champions, which I think makes sense. And you know what? You can make a program out of this. Maybe not just one, but two matches out of it. You can get two matches out of this shit. Why the fuck not? I'm pretty sure on Monday, Sasha will explain what happened. I'm pretty sure they're going to use the whole thing of people complaining on the internet about her, people saying that she's a whiner or a crybaby. They might use that shit. And you know what? It'll be smart if they did. It'd be really smart if they go into Monday and Sasha talks on the mic and she talks about people that have badmouthed her, that have just dragged her name in the mud these past couple of months coming out of WrestleMania. Why the fuck not? Make a lot of sense to me. But it has money written all over it. Coming out of SummerSlam. And again, I welcome your thoughts on that. Your thoughts on a Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks feud. Your thoughts on Sasha Banks returning. And where do you see all this going? I really do welcome your feedback. Speaking of women's wrestling, let's talk about Alicia Fox real quick. Alicia Fox apparently is going through some deep shit again. And people blame it on the alcohol again. Blame it on the alcohol. I did a video a couple of months ago where I gave my thoughts on Arn Anderson getting released from WWE because of uh, 
an incident was with Alicia Fox being intoxicated. What well, looks like Alicia Fox is at it again, being reported per SE Scoops that Alicia Fox was sent home during SummerSlam weekend. Casey Michael of Square Circle Siren posted to Twitter that Fox is alleged to have been involved in an incident with a fan and that alcohol was a contributing factor. This is what Casey Michael wrote on Twitter, in quote, this is two of, uh, of his tweets, in quote, so disappointed in a certain female wrestler on the main roster. And then after, she, he wrote this, in quote, Allegedly, Alicia Fox was, dr was a drunk mess over the week. Trying to confirm what exactly went down. Very sad. Hope she gets the help she needs. End quote. Keep this in mind, it's not the first time. Okay? Gotta remember, Arn Anderson was let go by WWE for letting Alicia Fox work intoxicated. Got to remember this too. WrestleMania 34 weekend, she got an altercation with Travis Brown. And again, you know, when you look at all this, right, it's very, very sad. And you know what? I can sit here and say, oh, she needs help, this and that. But you know what, Dobra? At the same time, I understand this shit. It's up to her at this point. In and I'm pretty sure WWE is offering her the help, trying to get her sober, trying to get her help that she needs. And if she rejects it, that's on her. End of the fucking day. I think, honestly, if you want my honest opinion, I think it's time for WWE to pull the plug on the bitch. Cancel her and buy a new one. Just like Nino Brown in New Jack City. It's time for WWE to cancel that bitch and go buy a fucking new one. There's plenty of talented women out there that you have not just on your roster, on the main roster, but also in developmental that would do anything to get, I guess, even the spot that Alicia's in, that being that Alicia Fox is on the main roster, but she's not really ain't doing shit. But again, it's up to her. It's very sad, obviously. You want them, you want the talent to get help, you want everything, you want the best for the talent. But if they don't want the help, what the fuck can you do? Seriously, what the fuck can you honestly do? So, it's also been reported that The Fiend, The Fiend Bray Wyatt, been in talk this week. They've been in talks. He had an amazing performance at SummerSlam. I enjoyed his entrance. It was fucking amazing. But more importantly, more importantly, it looks like 2K is going to let him in. So, WWE 2K has let him in. Because The Fiend will be a playable character via DLC in this year's edition of WWE 2K20 per Ryan Sadden of Pro Wrestling Sheet. It was reported that 2K Sports announced... The next installment of the game's franchise would be featuring something called Originals. And now here are more details on what that means. And here's the explanation from um, 2K basically. From 2K basically, right? WWE 2K Originals, Bump in the Night, is the first entry in the WWE 2K Original series of downloadable content packs. Each with a different home, different theme that will introduce in all new imaginative realms to WWE fans with new content with for all your favorite parts of WWE 2K to bump into bump in the night's horror vibe in perfect for all fall release following the launch of WWE 2K20 on October 22nd WWE 2K originals um, bump in the night is available at no additional purchase at no additional charge for those who pre-order WW2K20 at participating retailers. WW2K20 original bump in the night will also be available for individual purchase of $14.99. WW, this is more by the way, 2K20 bump in the night centerpieces is the debut playable version of the Fiend Bray Wyatt who taunted the WW universe for a month being in it before his in-ring debut at SummerSlam. This past Sunday, why it fits in perfectly with this pack loaded with a hard theme showcase, unique story towers, frightening versions of some of your favorite WWE superstars and much more. Here's an additional here's an additional hard theme character that will be in the game. Uh, the Swamp Father Bray Wyatt, Frank Frankenstroman, Wicked Aleister Black. Unleash Apex Predator Randy Yorton, Fed Up Sheamus, and plus two, 
plus mystery uh, versions of WWE stars, aside from the Survivor, Mandy Rose, and Twisted Nikki Cross. So, you know what? I'm all in on it. I think, again, you know, you want to make the best out of 2K20 coming up in the fall. Uh, will I be buying it? Not anytime soon. But I know people out there that are, again, are in, they're in the community that are into gaming, that are into 2K and all that stuff, and probably post content on their channels. So, for them, they're going to probably melt over this shit. Again, it's cool. It makes sense. And if you're into the game, so be it. Now... I'm kind of rushing things because, again, I have to really, you know, again, get ready in a little bit to go to Virginia. So, the King of the Ring is coming up starting this Monday. And it's going to be a 16-man tournament. They're bringing back the King of the Ring, which is crazy. I've always enjoyed the King of the Ring for whatever it was worth. I've always thought it was good as a pay-per-view theme. And then, as years went on, they made it into a special on the network and stuff like that. But it's going to be featured on both Raw and SmackDown. So, these are the list of, uh, I guess, the confirmed Raw superstar that will be in the King of the Ring. You have The Miz, Ricochet, Cedric Alexander, Samoa Joe, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, and Cesaro. From SmackDown Live, you have Kevin Owens, Ali, Apollo Crews, Chad Gable, Elias, Andrade Cien Almas, Buddy Murphy, which I'll get into just a little bit, and Shelton Benjamin. Again, it's a very, very good bracket from both sides. This should be very good matches that I look forward to. Uh, don't miss any of this action as the King of the Ring tournament will kick off Monday Night Live. Basically, it was Monday on Raw. If I'm going to pick a favorite right now, I have either, believe it or not, this is me, of course. If I can pick just two winners right now. It has to be between Andrade and Drew McIntyre. But I'm Leaning more towards Drew. I feel like Drew needs the win. I feel like Drew, this will, I guess, help elevate him to that next level. I'm not saying, oh my God, world champion, but I think you would assume that the winner of this will get a prize. I guess a championship match of some sort, and it could really help him in the long run. So I'm, gonna, I'm aiming more towards Drew McIntyre. I hope, honestly, though, at the same time, what I'm asking for, what I'm asking for as well is just good matches. Good, competitive matches all across the board. As they are doing the King of the Ring. Buddy Murphy. Buddy fucking Murphy, people. Really shocked the world this past Tuesday on SmackDown Live. Had a match with Roman Reigns. Now, if you've been watching SmackDown and doing this whole thing, well, who attacked Roman Reigns, right? And last week, Buddy Murphy said it was Strowman. My bad, it was Rowan. Eric Rowan, right? Garbage man. And to find out that it was a lie. But Roman Reigns... Had a match with Buddy Murphy. Buddy Murphy apparently on social media challenged Roman Reigns to a match. And I gotta say, bro, they tore it up. They literally went out there and they stole the fucking show. But more importantly, Buddy Murphy had the performance of his career. Now granted, people will say, oh, but Steve, you should have seen him in 205 Live with the length of Cedric Alexander. You should have seen him in there with the length of... uh." With with Hadan with Tommy Steve. You should have seen him in there with Tothawa. You should have seen him in there with Mustafa Ali Steve. They been he's been torn it up. Calm down, dorks. I get that. But you gotta remember this. Not everyone watches 205 Live. So the fact that you had him wrestle here on a SmackDown debut, if you will, against Roman fucking Reigns. And Roman Reigns Literally sold all of his shit and made it, like a hundred, made it look like a million bucks. Literally made all of Buddy Murphy's maneuvers feel like a million bucks. A couple of knees, fucking took hella moves. And again, it just felt perfect. Granted, he didn't win. But what I did like is how, how literally um, Buddy Murphy hung in there. Took Robin's best shot and got near fault and got people behind him. People were chanting, this is awesome. And again, I hope this is the beginning of what is to come of Buddy Murphy. And more importantly, the way he sold that spear. He did a fucking, he, he went inside out after the spear. He did like a fucking backflip. <laughs> Which was pretty cool. Also, when you think about it too, on Monday Night Raw, Cedric Alexander had an amazing match with Drew McIntyre where they tore it up. 
And granted, oh, Steve, why weren't these matches on SummerSlam, Steve? Well, again, you dorks, you got to understand this shit. Raw and SmackDown coming out of SummerSlam was part of SummerSlam weekend in the same building. If you'd have put those matches on the card, granted, SummerSlam, you think about it, was very lackluster. It didn't have that many star names. But putting these guys also on the card, bruh. By putting these guys on Raw and SmackDown individually, right, in their separate matches respectively, you give them the, the time to talk about. You put it on SummerSlam, it's like, okay, it's not SummerSlam. Something else on the card. That's the difference. And you think about it too. Cedric also sold the Claymore kick with a fucking backflip. And you think about that too. What do they both have in common? They both came out of 205 Live. And look where they're at now on the main roster. Tearing it up. And then you hope it's the beginning. Not for everything, too, but also look at Mustafa Ali. Ali, who has a win over Nakamura, right? Granted, then, you know, Ben is there, but, but you, get, you kind of get the idea, okay? It's for all the people that have been complaining about, oh, my God, look at, everybody, look at everyone now being wasted on 205 Live and shit like that. Well, look at the, trust the process. Look at now Mustafa Ali. Look at now Cedric Alexander. Look at now Buddy Murphy. God damn it, something has to be right over there. Time, people. Timing is fucking everything. Believe me when I say that, you dorks. Believe me when I fucking say that. Timing is fucking everything. We're running out of time here, but we're going to get some more stuff before I wrap this up. I know I said it's going to be heavy loaded. It kind of is. I'm packing everything in this one punch, if you will, okay? Calm it down, dorks. WWE announced the signing of not just one, but two people, but basically the one that matters the most, okay? But obviously, WWE signed both Santana Garrett and Austin Theory. Santana Garrett, I've seen wrestle before. She's pretty good. She's wrestled in Impact Wrestling. She's wrestled in the Mae Young Classic. She's been featured a lot in NXT here and there as an enhancement. Also part of WOW, but now she's being part of NXT. She's officially... You know, into a WWE, into a WWE developmental deal. Good for her. Awesome. Happy for her. What I'm also happy for, more importantly, is Austin Theory. Austin Theory, who is the current Evolve champion. And you all saw him at TakeOver this past Saturday. He was in the crowd. He was all dressed up in a suit and this and that. And he looked like a fucking big deal. And he has. And you know what? If you have, never, if you have not seen yet an Austin, an Austin Theory match... Go out of your way and watch one. It's, he's fucking amazing. He's everything you can imagine. Okay? And then some. A little bit. I've seen him wrestle at Evolve a couple times. And the guy is, again, you look at him, he's a star. He has that look about that pressing, that aura to him of a star. It's like Adam Cole almost. Like, they stand out. Something about Adam Cole many years ago that you looked at and you're like, you know what? That guy... Years ago, this is like back in 2013, when you saw Adam Cole wrestle in Ring of Honor, I was like, yo, you knew that guy was WWE bound. And look at him now, NXT champion. You look at Austin Theory, same thing. You look at him wrestle at Evolve or whatever the fuck it may be at, and you look at him, it's like, yo, you already know this guy is WWE bound. It's going to happen, believe it or not. It's going to fucking happen, you know? And when it happens, yo, you all going to enjoy it. Now... That being said, it's not like they're gonna debut him right away. It's gonna take time. You gotta probably wrestle, you know, again on the on these on the house show circuit, this and that. But if I can pitch an idea, uh, if I can pitch an idea of how to book Austin Theory, fantasy booking, and I, and I normally don't do this. If you want to see good fantasy booking, check out OK Fabe and How Would You Book It series. Very good stuff. But if I could. This is what I would do. And again, they won't do this, but if they could, if they, if they could, it's probably NXT. Okay? As you guys know, Evolve has this partnership with NXT. Austin Theory is the current Evolve champion. You notice too that a lot of the NXT guys wrestle at Evolve here and there. I, this is what I would do. And again, I know they're doing they're doing tapings yesterday and today so as of this recording. Who the fuck knows? But if I could. And again, guys, give me your thoughts as well. I would have Austin Theory show up to Full Sail with the Evolve title. You already said he's the Evolve champion. You had Triple A say at a, conf at a conference call, 
He's the Evolve champion, this and that, right? So have him show up with the Evolve title, right? And if you want to make a big deal, right? Hey, here's a guy who, again, no one in Evolve can beat him. So we have to go to NXT, right? With the belt, this and that, right? He's a real superstar, this and whatnot, right? He's walking into a takeover and all that shit, right? That's what he's been saying if you follow him, on, if you follow him and Evolve and shit like that, right? But you have him show up at full sale with the belt. And you know what? We all know that Gargano's on his way out. Eventually. Again, who knows? Again, as of this recording, who the fuck knows, right? And you have him take out Johnny Gargano on his way out. Basically, take him out of NXT. Because you know Gargano's main roster bound anytime now. It's going to happen. And right off the bat, he's a big deal. Holy shit, he took out Johnny Gargano. He took out the face of NXT. The heart and soul of NXT. Johnny Takeover, he took him out. And what a good way. And from there, you know, you build your way up. You go in there as the Evolve Champion. You don't have him lose the belt right away. That being the Evolve title. I know he has still matches coming up at Evolve. But you know what, though? It will be, it'll be really cool to see that type of story. Like an invasion, if you will, right? Here's the Evolve Champion. Coming into full sale with his belt, acting like he's the top dog, the big fucking deal. And again, you want to make a splash, want to make a fucking impact? Take out Gargano. Why the fuck not? And you know what? You can do a Gargano Austin Theory match. I've seen it happen at Evolve this past January. But why not? Again, is if they do it or not, I'm not really sure. But it'd be cool if they fucking did. Again, give me your thoughts on that. Do you want to see what you, what would be your idea if you could book a Johnny Gargano versus my bad if you could book Austin Theory's NXT debut and stuff like that? But you already know this guy's gonna be a big star in NXT. You look at the crop of talent that they have right now in NXT: Adam Cole, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, uh, freaking Punisher Martinez. I know he has another name, right? Uh, Damien Priest. I'm sorry. God damn. Um, and so on and so forth, okay? Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, Roddy, Adam Cole. The list goes on. The list goes on of all these names that they have right now. At a time where they're going to go head-to-head with AEW come the fall on FS1. I'm happy. What a good time to be a fucking wrestling fan on Wednesday nights. I'm in. I'm all in on that. Even Velveteen Dream. I know I didn't mention Velveteen Dream or, or, or Pete Dunne. But you kind of get the idea, okay? But I do welcome your feedback on how would you book Austin Theory in NXT. Give me your thoughts on that, guys. Speaking of, I guess, the independence, if you will. AEW, All Elite Wrestling. No, they're not indie, but they're a top company, okay? Let's get that out of the way. I don't want to upset any AEW diehards out there and shit. But it was announced this past, it was announced this week if you've watched Being the Elite, that there's a new signing to All Elite Wrestling, that being Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy is now part of a now part of AEW. He did, did a vignette on Being the Elite where he put his contract through a, through a blender with orange juice and poured it in a cup. Whatever, from wherever. And here's the thing about it, okay? I've seen Austin... I've seen... Orange Cassidy before. I've seen him wrestle live at Evolve early this year. The guy's funny. I'm not denying that. He's a good comedy act. However, and I know this is going to piss off a lot of people. Oh my God, Steve, how dare you say that and shit like that. But Orange Cassidy is a good comedy act on the independent scene. Where it does fly, it gets over, it has a good reaction, people laugh, all the fuck you want. AEW is going to TNT. Now, over the years, there have been some good comedy acts on television. There has been. Santino Morella, Bobby Heenan, Kurt Angle. Uh, the list goes on, right? The list goes on of all this, the people that we've seen over the years and shit like that, right? That have been good comedy acts on television that got over, what have you, right? And also, I found out that they, signed, they also signed Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt, right? This size and shit, right? Like you can literally be, this guy could literally be my fucking little brother if, if he really wanted to. And I feel like it is the thing, okay? I'm happy, all the fuck you want, yay! But if I can be honest, 
I feel like Tony Khan is wasting his money. Just wasting it away. Signing talent that, in my opinion, and take this for what it's worth, they're not ready for TV yet. They really aren't ready to be put on TV. And that's not a knock on these guys. Again, they're great. They're awesome on the independent scene. All the fuck you want. They get over. They sell merch at the, ta- at the merch table. The fuck you want. But one thing is being cool on the indies. Another thing is being primetime TV ready. And with all the respect, I don't think that Orange Cassidy, Marco Stunt, or a good percentage of the AEW roster is quote-unquote primetime TV ready. I wish them the best of luck. I'll be watching. I hope they kill it, but we, we'll, but we'll see. But I think at the same time, there's a part of me that says that Tony Khan, when it comes to signing these talents here and there, he's just wasting his money. He's letting the Bucks and Cody and Kenny sign away any guy that they see on the Indies here and there, but eh, I don't know. This is my opinion, of course. Give me your thoughts on that. I mean, cause again, you, if you watch Orange Cassidy, again, he, he wrestles with his hands in his pockets and throw these wimpy kicks and shit like that. It's funny. I get it, but eh, it's there. Okay. It's been announced as well that Kota Ibushi has done the wrestling world a fucking favor in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He defeated fuckboy Jay White to win the G1. And in virtue of winning the G1, Kota Ibushi will headline Wrestle Kingdom in 2020 in the Tokyo Dome. Likely be against Okada. Now, with that being said, who the fuck knows? It was a fun match. All the fuck you want for whatever it was worth. But the idea of an Okada and Kota Ibushi match at the Dome. Not bad. I'm convinced. It should be a very, very good match. You think about this, right? Hey, Kenny Omega couldn't beat Okada in the Dome, right? Kenny Omega had that amazing match at Wrestle Kingdom 13, right? Or Wrestle Kingdom, my bad, was it Wrestle Kingdom 11? Yeah, it was Wrestle Kingdom 11, right? Had that kick-ass match, right, with Okada, right? And now... And he couldn't do it. He couldn't beat Okada in the Dome. He beat him eventually, but not in Tokyo. Not where it really matters. In the Tokyo Dome. And here comes Kota Ibushi, who's Kenny Omega's friend, right? The Golden Lovers. And imagine if Kota Ibushi beats Okada in the Dome. That would be insane. That, to me, would be insane. It should be a fun match. All the fuck you want. It was also reported that John Moxley who signed the AEW, his contract with New Japan is set to expire likely on January 4th. Meaning, will he wrestle in the Tokyo Dome? Now keep this in mind, AEW talent, they're not allowed to talk, they're not allowed to take outside booking once they hit television on TNT. So what does that mean? Will we possibly see John Moxley in the Tokyo Dome come January, even though by that time, AW would have been already on TNT. I hope so. Honestly, and I said this before, and I'll say it again. A part of me really wishes that John Moxley did not sign another multi-year deal into another company after leaving WWE. Right? Could you look at John Moxley in New Japan? Say what you want. The guy's having fun. You can just tell the guy's having so much fun. He's enjoying what he's doing in New Japan that you really wish that he didn't sign a deal with, with AEW. Granted. You know, it is what it is, it's fine, but at this at this just me of course. I just wish honestly he just took it to stick with New Japan. And you know what? See Wrestle Wrestle Kingdom. Against who? Maybe him and Tomohiro Ishii. Why the fuck not? I mean again, we'll see. I think he will though. I think they'll make an exception for him in Jericho. But let's see what happens. Also, Kenta joined the Bullet Club. Out of nowhere, I mean, Tamatanga announced on Twitter that there'll be a new member to the Bullet Club. So here we are. We now have Kenta, the former Hideo Itami, as the newest member of the BC. It should be cool. It's fine for what it's worth. Uh, it's another. It's a big name, if you will, right? Someone that had the WWE rub, right? 
not only that, but one of the best Japanese performers out there, and that being Kenta. And maybe I'm wrong, but if they do this, imagine, imagine a Kenta versus Katsuyori Shibata match at the Dome. If they can wait that further, if they can wait that long. I mean, Shibata hasn't wrestled the match since I want to say, I want to say Dominion. No, no, no. Um, what was, what was the Okada versus uh, Shibata match? I want to find out here. Uh, Okada. Bear with me here, guys. Bear with me here. Sakura Genesis. There you go. They have wrestled in Sakura Genesis. That's how long it's been. So can you imagine, right? You have at Wrestle Kingdom, right? You have Katsuyori Shibata versus Okada. My bad. Katsuyori Shibata versus... Um, you have Katsuyori Shibata, right? Versus... Kenta, Okada versus Shibata, Okada versus uh, Ibushi, John Moxley, Jericho, and all that stuff. It's a stacked card. And why the fuck not? Why the fuck not? Guys, just give me one sec. Guys. I'll be back momentarily, guys. Just bear with me here. Bear the fuck with me. All right, I'm back, guys. Again, if you anything, just scroll like 30 seconds, and you'll be seeing me right back in here, back in full effect. But like I was saying before, you know, you look at that Wrestle Kingdom card, right? <sighs> Hypothetically, right? Imagine, again, you have Okada and Shibata. You have Katsuri Shibata and Kenta. You add a John Moxley match versus Tomohiro Ishii. You have Jericho versus somebody. I don't know who. Maybe Tanahashi. Why the fuck not, right? And then I guess, what do you do with Naito? Another question, too. I feel like Naito been out of the loop. I feel like they really did not do Naito any service here at all. But we'll see. We shall fucking see. Well, that's gonna wrap things up for me, guys. Again, I have to get ready for Virginia in a couple in a little bit. A lot of fun stuff. I hope that you all enjoyed it for what it's worth. This impromptu episode of Around the Point. I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. I really do believe so. Yes, I did. So, guys, thank you all for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up. Share this video throughout your entire social media. Again, guys, if you want the best graphic designs in the IWC, hit my man Sal Rex on Twitter. as SRXGFX. Tell him that I sent you. Not only is Sal res responsible for the graphic designs on this channel, not only is he responsible for the graphic designs for... You know, the logo of Around the Point and as well the team of Podcast, but he's also done graphic designs for the likes of JD from NY206, The Solemn Monster, House of Glory, Big Mike, and so many other people. Again, he is the best. He does amazing stuff. So tell him that I sent you guys. All right. Follow me on Twitter at Heel Steven. I'll be back probably, yeah, coming Monday. I'll be back home and a lot of fun stuff. And we'll get back into the grind. It's a mix of things. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. As always, dorks, hate, comment, and subscribe. I am the Supreme Heel. Get it? Supreme? Supreme, hit me up. Just saying. But more importantly, guys, this has been Around the Point. Run, dorks.